How's it going? My name is Lox, and today I want to show you how to make a pickup and drop system. This is a pretty common system in a lot of indie games, and even games like Skyrim had this feature. To start, we're going to add an empty in line with our camera. Now with the camera selected, let's set the cursor to the camera. Then we're going to add in an empty. Let's move that empty away from the camera, and that looks about right. Then I'm going to name this empty hand. With hand selected, I'm now going to select the camera, and I'm going to parent that empty to the camera. That way, wherever we look, that empty will be there. Now we need to add a script to the camera. With the camera selected, I'm going to go over to the Python properties and create a new module. I'm going to call this module pickup.component. Then I'm going to go over to the text editor and I'm going to select my pickup script. Let's make that a little bit bigger there. And then I'm just going to clean this up. Now that our script is nice and clean, let's move all this stuff in the start up to the awake function. Then in start, I'm just going to pass that. Up in my awake, I'm going to make a space, and then I'm going to click on my scene line and then control D to duplicate that line. Then I'm going to call this OBJ, and I want it to get objects, dot objects. This way I can grab all the objects in my scene. Then in between start and update, I'm going to make a, another little space here. Then I'm going to say def pickup then I'm going to put it in my parentheses, then self inside of the parentheses. Then I'm going to cap that off. Now inside of pickup, we're going to say pass for now. In the update, I'm then going to get rid of that pass. I'm going to say self dot pickup, and I just press control and spacebar to autocomplete, and then parentheses. That way my pickup function is going to work in the update loop. The way we're going to do this is we're going to get a screen ray. That screen ray is going to touch an object with a specific property and let us know that it is a object we can pick up. When we pick it up, it's going to set that coordinate to our empty and we're going to have it smooth so it has a little bit of physics with it. All right, so in our pickup function, let's get rid of pass and we're going to do self dot object. So that's going to be our camera and we want dot and then get screen ray. You can find these little methods inside of the Python range API. But we're going to be getting screen ray, but we need to get an X and Y coordinate of our mouse. In order to get that X and Y value, we are going to make a little bit more space and we're going to say mouse underscore pose equals logic dot mouse dot position. There we go. So that should get our mouse position. If we want to test this out, we can always make some space and print. Then we are going to print our mouse position and see what kind of values we get. But before you play the game, make sure that you comment out this section of code because these values are not gonna work. So if we press play and I bring my console over here, you can see that we are getting our X and Y values for our mouse position. But now we need to separate our mouse position. We could just put it in here as mouse position and then square brackets and then zero and one, but we're gonna make this a little bit more nice. So we're just gonna come down here and say mouse underscore X is equal to mouse pose and then square brackets and zero. Zero is going to be our first value, which is going to be our X axis. So we can now duplicate this. So control D, we're gonna change this to Y and mouse pose is going to be one. We can now go back to our get screen ray and in the X, we're just going to say mouse and then X and for the Y is going to be mouse and Y. Now for our distance, this can be a arbitrary number and we can test it out. But for now, we're gonna set it to 10. If it's not far enough, then you can always up it to another value. The property as it is right now is none but we want to get a specific property. So in single quotes, we are going to say item. Now we need to detect this item. Any object with this property will be able to pick up. So let's add a game property and just paste in item. Let's actually make this get screen ray a local variable and we'll call this ray and then equals self.object.get screen ray. If we go over to our print and we print ray, press play, when we have nothing selected, we have none. And when I walk over to this cube, we can see that it gives us the name of the cube we have selected. So now we need to add a key input. So when we press the right mouse button, it's going to set the position of our selected cube to our hand position. 
So under right, let's go down a couple of lines, and we actually need to distinguish whether something is being selected. If it is a none object, then we may get an error. So in order to prevent a future error happening, let's say if ray is not equal to none, then we will do a thing. Now underneath of that, let's just print quotes is an object. And this will let us know that our code is working. And I just want to make sure this print is turned off for now. So we have nothing. And then if we select an object, is an object. So we can get rid of that now that we know it's working. And let's go down another line here just for now. Now we're going to get a key input. If we go up to our wake, we can see that we have a keyboard and a mouse input option. We want to use the mouse. Let's do self.mouse, square brackets, then events dot left mouse and we'll do that in all caps if you go into the documentation you can see all the inputs that are available for mice keyboard and controllers outside of those square brackets we're going to go dot and active and active just means as long as the left mouse button is held down it will activate this code so we'll cap that off and we'll be cool and actually make this an if statement so if self.mouse events left mouse is active and we have a selection, then we're going to set the selected object to the hand position. And in order to do that, we're going to say ray dot world position is equal to self dot obj. So we're actually going to be getting an object from the scene, quotes, and hand. Then we want to make sure this is its world position. So dot world position. So now we're just going to be setting the selected object to the hand world position. Like that. So now I can pick up any of these objects. We can even stack them if we wanted to. So in the state that we are in now, you could probably call this quits and move on. But I'm going to show you how to make the objects sway a little bit and look like they're being affected by physics a little bit more. The way to do this is we're going to go all the way up and we're going to say from math utils import vector. So we're going to be using vector to lerp our object. To do this, let's go down and we're going to say ray.worldPosition is going to be equal to vector.lerp. Then we're going to put this in parentheses and we want to lerp our selected object, which is going to be our ray, to our hand.worldPosition. So we're going to say ray.worldPosition, then comma to separate it and then at the end we're going to do another comma and this will be our factor so we could set this to a value like 0 0.2 and that should be pretty slow if we press play then we can walk up to our objects where'd they go there they are and we should have a little bit of a lerp going on here so we could set this to an even lower number like 0 0.1 now this should be pretty slow there we go so now we have a little bit of sway. We can see that it is slowly falling out of our hands. Oh, I don't know why the gravity is just absolutely ridiculous right now. Another thing we can do is lerp it using delta time. This will make it a little bit smoother and a little more consistent with our frame rate. So we can choose a value like 10 and then multiply it by logic dot delta time. Then parentheses on the end of that. Now when we press play, we walk up to our cube, and this will act a little bit slower. But if we want that to be a little bit nicer, then we could set it to a value like 100, and this will speed it up. Now it's falling pretty slow, and we can hold on to it a little bit more reliably. And <laughs> we can stack our objects. Definitely need to fix the physics in this world, but that'll work. With that, that's about all I have for you today. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. and. With that, I've been Locks, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.